Okay guys, it's Steve again, I'm back. Right where we left off, start at the timer, all right? So, um, last time we left off where I have a uh, Jetty server running in Noir, or sorry, running in Vagrant. So I'm gonna kill that for right now, because we're gonna do things a little bit different, but it's gonna be a little more, for me at least, easier. So I'm gonna start up MacVim. All right, let me, before I forget, increase the font size. All right, um, so I'm gonna go pick a file. Um, let's just go search. So, um, I use mostly uh, a plugin called SlimV. It's um, a pun on slime, you know, the superior Lisp interaction mode for Emacs. This is superior Lisp interaction mode for Vim. Um, it's by uh, Covisoft, I think. And you can just find it if you Google for SlimV. Um, but the cool thing about it is it lets you talk to a Swank server, right? Um, which gives you a REPL right inside Vim. Um, and recent versions have added the ability to connect to a Swank server running on uh, another host, right? And so what we're going to do is we're going to start our Swank server on the Vagrant VM, and we can just run the line Swank to do that. Okay, uh, it'll take a second. It's got to start up a JVM. Um, but once it does that, uh, Swank will be listening. Yep, on port. Oops, sorry. So it'll be listening on port 4005 on the VM. Get out of there. Okay. Um, but actually, what we need to do um, is run line Swank. Crap, I don't remember the command. Um, we need to tell it to listen on all interfaces, so not just 127.0.0.1. Right, so we need to say listen on 0000, 000 uh, port 4005. Right, because uh, we, we're running MacVim on our host OS, and so we need to be able to connect to it. Um, oh, the port has to come first, of course. And of course, it takes like 20 seconds to find that out, because the JVM takes forever to start up. Uh, but you know, JVM is incredible, so it's worth the startup time for me. All right, so we got Swank listening here, um, and recent versions of SlimV have given you the ability to connect to a remote host. And to do that, you need to say um, let g swank host equal, and then you give it the IP. And this is why we used the host-only networking before in the VM, so that we have an IP that we can hit. Oops, sorry, ten. And we connect, and there we go. That's it. Um, so we now we have a closure REPL here. You know, we can run commands. But this REPL is actually running inside the VM, right? Which is the really cool part. All right. So I'm going to maximize this window now because we won't need to look at the terminal very much more. Um, and so what I'm going to do is evaluate the buffer here. Um, and basically what that's going to do uh, is compile. It's basically... Um, running evaluate buffer in SlimV, um, basically just copy and pastes all of this text into the remote REPL. Uh, and so the first time you do it, it's going to take a little bit to compile all the extra stuff, but um, after that, it should be pretty fast. Um, and yeah, like I said, I use SlimV, but I also um, use kind of an unholy combination of SlimV and Vim Closure. Um, I really, really like the syntax and the indentation that Vim Closure uses. Uh, SlimV's is really subpar because it's made to work mostly with Lisp only with Clojure as kind of an afterthought. Um, so I really like Vim Clojure's indentation and syntax files, but I want to work with SlimV because I also like playing with Lisp, and I don't want to have to learn two sets of bindings to do it. Okay? So, this is taking longer than usual. It's probably because I'm running a screencast at the same time. Sorry about that. It'll be fast after this. Um, it's usually much faster than this anyway. So, come on. Oh, apparently it just didn't tell me that it was finished. Okay. <laughs> yeah, uh, this, this whole combination of SlimV and Vim Closure um, and Vagrant is all just a huge, hacky tower of mostly workingness that's held together with duct tape and hope. So um, there's a lot of bugs you'll see um, that I've just kind of lived with for now because I don't write Closure at my full-time job, so I don't really have the initiative to fix it. So um, yeah. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to start the server. But we're going to do it from within Swank, like this. I'm going to say main and run in development mode. Okay? So it starts the server. But remember, this server is running inside the VM. Right? You can see that here's our SSH to connection to the VM. There we go. So now we have a server running on the VM. And we can hit port 8000. And it still works. Still works great. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and create an account, just so we have something to do. It's an old test password. We don't need the background. All right, um, this should just this 
should just work. Alright, um, so there's one more thing I'm going to do before I actually start getting to real coding. Um, I'm going to kill the swank server. <laughs> um, and what I'm going to do is, the whole point of the screencast, what I'm going to do is add some of those metrics to this um, to this site so that I can kind of track some usage. Um, the site doesn't really get many users now, but I figure it'll be a good exercise and it'll give me a chance to actually use this library that I've created and see how painful it is and maybe there's better things. Um, and I haven't really planned out anything more than that, um, so there's probably going to be a lot of me looking at documentation and swearing at the REPL um, during the screencast, so um, that's what to expect. If you don't like that, sorry, but that's what you're going to get. Um, so what I'm going to do is open up project.clj, and I'm going to add met the metrics library as a requirement. So metrics closure. Oh, yeah, when you kill the uh, the Swank server out from under SlimV, it really doesn't like it, and it'll just freeze for a little while until you press some number of keys. Uh, like I said, held together with duct tape and hope. So, um, so the version of metric closure is currently at 0 0.5.0. It uh, hasn't hit 1.0 1 yet, 1 yet, so until it hits 1.0, don't complain if there's backwards incompatible changes, because if you do, I'm just going to make fun of you on Twitter. So, all right, so I'm going to add that to the project.clj. I'm going to go back to my iTerm, and I'm going to run line depths again. Yep, and now it's pulling down metrics closure. And hopefully, yep, it'll also pull down um, metrics core from Coda Hale's repo. So now we got that. Now we can run my swank again. And it'll take a second. Uh, but this is the last time we'll have to restart the swank server um, now that we've got all the requirements. Okay, so that works. Now I'm going to lo do local leader RC. Oh, crap. Ugh, every time. Ugh. Yeah, I need to listen on every port. Or, sorry, every interface. All right. This time it should work, I promise. All right. Yep, listening everywhere. Um, local leader RC is what connects. Um, SlimV has two sets of bindings, the short ones and the long ones. I use the long ones because the short ones just clobber like every other binding I use. And it's just incredibly frustrating. So I use the long ones. It's a couple more keystrokes, but I love it. And once again, I'm going to go to server.clj and evaluate the entire buffer. And we're just going to wait for that to finish. Okay. And let's run the server again with this dash main. Um, this dash main is basically what um, line run does for a noir project, right? So, oh, running the server. And because uh, we're running it in dev mode, if we change something, it'll automatically reload the code for us. So we don't need to reevaluate the buffer every single time. So that's kind of handy. So let me refresh. Okay. I refreshed and it's still working. So if I search for Eureka, I should get Eureka. Might take a second because it actually act, has to actually talk to iTunes to get these search results. So, okay. So it added Eureka to the list. Sweet, and we should be able to remove, and everything should just work. Okay. Um, so yeah, this site is open source. This new season, so you can try everything I'm doing in the screencast right now. Um, if you just go to GitHub.com/sjl/newseasons, that's where the code is, right? So you can get everything, uh, and the instructions are all here, right? You just clone down the repository, uh, you spin up the Vagrant VM. Um, you have to copy this one file, um, but other than that, you just run line depths and line run, and there you go. Um, so that's about it. Um, I have a few minutes left, but I'm actually going to cut this one short, because that's a good place to stop on this screencast. Um, during the next one, we'll start actually instrumenting this code and trying to get some useful metrics out of this to uh, so we can figure out what's going on and how I can improve this site. All right, see you in a bit, guys.